Hey folks, this is JW with uh, Stevens Family Outdoors. Uh, this is the Old Man Trapping series, and uh, today is um, the 27th of January. Yes, 27th of January uh, to, uh, 2020, and we're getting ready to run a snare line for coyotes. Uh, Tomorrow, going to get a few snares ready tonight and um, or this afternoon and get them ready for tomorrow. My son Tommy is going to be setting some footholds and I'll be running the snares. Um, we have like uh, several farms that a farmer has uh, pretty good coyote numbers on them and uh, they are causing problems with these cattle. So we're there for both fur and nuisance problems. So I uh, want to get to uh, show you just a little bit here our setup. Now some of the areas that that we snare are uh, along the, the wood edges where there's um, trees that we can fasten to to support our snares uh, to where it doesn't matter if it's a tangle situation or not because there are no uh, dogs running in this area uh, that we're at. Um, if you do have an area where uh, you may have a dog or you can't have a tangle situation and you need cable restraints, uh, this setup here that I'm going to be using, uh, I can't take credit for this folks, but uh, I will give you the gentleman's name and you can get on his YouTube channel to find out uh, how to make these. Um, these are, we have like the disposable stakes with the point uh, that are fastened. So you can pull them up out of the ground when you get done. You pull them up out of the ground with this and the snare. Uh, let me get one that Okay, the snare that we're going to be using is um, West Virginia certified here. Let me show you. It's got the 285 pound breakaway on it. Uh, this happens to be a washer lock that I'm using. You also see here that we have uh, a whammy that we made out of um, tractor supply, electric fence. This is uh, electric ribbed electric fence uh, insulators for the high tensile fencing if you want to electrify it this is what it looks like when they come out of the box and you get a bunch you can make three or four whammies out of just one of these and with the number nine gauge wire and the 332nd snare cable they fit really well and uh, boom you've got it now with with these you drive these in the ground as deep as you need to go and then you can bend bend these over over your um, trail like I say if you need to be setting cable restraints and that number gauge nine gauge wire you can bend it like it. if you need to be setting cable restraints without any um, tangle situations you can set these in fields in high grass trails and all they'll do is just go around and circle around and circle without tangling anything uh, so this this here uh, snare support you can go to Dustin Drews D-R-E-W-S Dustin Drews on YouTube and find out exactly how to make these for yourself so I definitely do not take credit for this uh, but I'll tell you what, I really like the setup and I um, want to give Dustin the credit for, for coming up with this idea. i tell you what, it is, <laughs> you can just carry him right out there and go and then walk back. The only thing you'll be carrying back is your driver and your hammer. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here and uh, make a few of these snares ready for tomorrow. Now... What I'll be using, I'll be using uh, 332nd uh, cable 
and my snares are going to have to be five feet. 60 inches. And then we start off with what I use. I use the cam lock. I like the cam lock. I like the washers too. Depends on depends on what I'm uh, trapping for. But the cam lock, I really like those. And then we have the, as we said before, 285 pound breakaway S hooks for West Virginia uh, law. It's either that or a deer stop. And I just don't like the deer stops because they tend to put a little bit too much fur damage uh, on my fur uh, if they happen to be spinning around a little longer than they should. Okay, what we got here now, we've got uh, five foot of the uh, snare cable, the cam lock, and I'm going to be working on the business end uh, here. I'm going to stick the the cam lock on the end of the cable as such so that it will be sliding down this way and what I want to do next could have done this first and, and, and stuck the uh, cam lock on backwards I'm going to put a double ferrule on that end tuck it back around And then we need to stick the breakaway through the solid end that's already crimped onto the snare cable. Hope you can see this good enough. I like to pull this down to just a small loop, as small as possible. Leave just a little bit of snare cable in sticking out of the end and there's your breakaway thing switch now I've got to stick this in here in the crimper tool crimp it down I like to go twice and now what we've got here we've got the, the cam lock and we've got the breakaway and I hook the open end of the breakaway into the cam lock and you try to fix it so that it's going to, there you go. Now what you've got to do when you crimp these breakaways down, you don't make them round, you crimp them so that they're sort of flat so you, you know, that they don't tear apart too easy. You want them to be able to tear apart. Now what I, I do is I stick them in the end I don't know if you can see this or not. Let me adjust the camera a little bit. I stick them in the end The camera wants to jump back in the end of my crimper and I pull down I'll big, get my big fingers out of the way just pull down straight on that There you go. Get that about like this. And what I'll also do, I'll show you right here. This is my trapper bender. Where I make my uh, snare swivels and everything. Now, what you want to do to to set your snare and um, load it is what they call. You want to go with the bend about eight inches, and that loads your snare to where it should go off fairly easy. I always do that. Now, sometimes, you know, if it's not too bad, I'll wait until I'm in the field. 
to load it and that makes it causes it to jump causes it to jump down uh, whenever the animal's uh, neck gets in in the snare okay one more thing we've got to do and this snare is finished is the we need to put the whammy on Stick the whammy on there. Don't want to forget the whammy. Just run it on up. This has got a burr on the end of it. Let me see if I can cut that back just a hair. Now what we want to do is just make the loop. Now when I'm using these these new uh, stabilizers, I don't use the swivel because the swiveling action is going to be the whole stabilizer itself. Now I like to make my loop about that big. Now. Uh, in West Virginia, we need to have name tags on all of our uh, traps. There you got the finish snare, whammy. You got the lock. You got the breakaway. And on this end is the loop. Now, in West Virginia, we need to tag with a name tag or a number all of our traps so what I do is I do not put my name tag on the actual snare itself I put it on the stabilizer as you see it wrapped around the retrieving cable there now let me show you how I put the snare on the stabilizer very very simple okay what I do is Take the end loop of the snare and I put it down, put the stabilizer wire through it down to this loop. This loop. This is the, the loop in your stabilizer. Then I get the working end of the snare and I run it back through the loop of the stabilizer. Make sure you get your whammy and everything. Then you pull it up and there it is. It's locked in. Nothing's going to pull that loose. Then when you get ready to set your snare, you get your loop size, which I'm going to be doing about 10 inches for coyotes. About right in there somewhere. You get your loop size and you get your whammy. You run it in your number nine gauge wire. You bend it over how you want it. And there it is. So make sure you visit Dustin Drew on YouTube and uh, he will. He'll show you how he makes these stabilizers. It'd be better than me going through all that there when he's the one who invented this to start with. So um, give him a gander there. And uh, you may even want to subscribe to his channel. Don't forget to subscribe to mine. It's uh, Stephen's Family Outdoor. Hit that subscribe button and uh, that notification bell so you can get all the updates of the, the videos. And watch your eyes whenever you've got these here.
just put a double ferrule on, make a loop. Leave a little bit stick out the other end. Bring it down to the side if you want. I like about that much right there. For this setup. If I wasn't using these stabilizers, I'd probably I'd be using a uh, swivel that I make. Make them with this. I don't know what to call it, the trapper bender or something, whatever. But you can uh, buy that on a lot of your trapping stores if you're so interested. So we'll just repeat that about another 50 times and we'll be done with our snares. Okay, what I wanted to show you here is how you hook the um, breakaway S-hook into your cam lock. Now, if you go the wrong way, on the wrong side, it's going to look like that. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's not going to work. It's not going to be too smooth. So what you need to do before you hook it up, you need to see which way it wants to fall by itself, which is on that side. And so, it falls up really, really uh, good and right in line with, with the snare. So you're going to have a good, uh, a good slide. All right, no binding up or anything. Okay, another tip that I've found here when I'm working with this is you never want to force this cable to do what it doesn't want to do. You let it go with its memory, okay? Like if when you're sticking it back in this double ferrule, you don't want to twist it to where it's uh, distorted out of its memory. You just want to let it loosely in your hands and let it find its own way and then just for, put the end in through there, pull her down tight. This is, uh, this is the lock end. I like to pull that down as tight as I can get. Okay, so you want to you want to let the cable walk where it wants to go uh, whenever you're uh, working with it on either end, either on the the lock end or on the uh, loop end there. So you never want to fight it. Okay, I want to talk about uh, loading a snare and exactly what that is. Now I know most of you snaremen, you already know what it is. Uh, but there are probably a few out there that don't know what it is or the benefits of loading a snare. Uh, this, I haven't done anything <clears throat> to this one yet, but it doesn't do too bad. But to load a snare, what you do is you drag the um, cable on a metal object like... Um, screwdriver or I'll show you here how I, I do it on the workbench uh, but what you want to do is you want to drag it along this area right here so that it puts a bend in the cable and pushes the end that way so it closes lightning fast let me show you here let me adjust the camera back down there okay here we have my trappers bender and there's a, a uh, metal piece coming out of there. Now what I want to do, you want to hold, you want to hold your, your snare the way the memory goes. You don't want to bend it against its memory. So what you do is you start here and you lightly pull it. Uh, pressure against it. Like that. Okay. So it's starting to get a, starting to get a bend in. Do a little bit more. There you go. See how that... Here, you see how this curved in this way and how quick it just wants to jump down when something hits it? You follow what I'm saying? It's round, but when you get right to here, it wants to bend this way to sort of kick it, kick it down when he hits it. 
like that. And do it one more time for you. Okay, that's called loading a snare. Now you want to be careful. Uh, you don't overload it. It'll, you'll get, get it all blown and it won't work. Okay, after I get a snare completed, uh, what I want to do is I do not want to store them in real small circles like this and wrap them up because uh, their memory will stay that way over an extended period of time and and a lot of times they'll get get out of whack when you go to use them. I, I usually try to keep them about the uh, the size that I'm going to use for like a coyote. So I, I usually like to keep them about 9, 10 inches. Then I'll just stick the end back through and just keep weaving it back through so that it will hold itself together like that. And then we store them in a pile. Now what I'll do when I get finished making all these, I'll take them in the house and I'll put them in a solution of uh, baking baking soda water, and I'll boil them till they come to a boil. And then uh, what I'll th what that does, it takes the oil off of it. And I know a lot of guys say, well, when you do that, the baking soda deteriorates the uh, aluminum ferrules. Well. You gotta rinse them real good. Rinse them really good after you get finished. You know, when you when you go to dump the water off, you're gonna want to dump the top off first because that's where the oil is gonna be laying at on the top. You dump that off first. You don't reach in and grab the snares and pull them back up through that oily substance. Uh, so what you want to do is dump the water off slowly till all the oil gets off, and then rinse them thoroughly, and you'll be okay. I've had some in storage here for several years, and they're still in great shape. So anyway, um, stay tuned, and we will be uh, posting daily, hopefully, with uh, progress on on our snare line here. So y'all stay tuned to the Old Man Trapping Series. This is J.W. Stevens Family Outdoors. Have a great day, and God bless. <laughs>